Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. And what I've got whizzing around in front of me today are six millimeter tall British infantry for the Napoleonic Wars. Uh, these guys specifically are from the Waterloo campaign uh, from that period later on in the war. And they are from Henry Turner, who's very kindly let me have the STLs to print out a bunch of these. I will pop plenty of links in the description so you can go and check out his work because it is fantastic. Now I have played with some of Henry's stuff before, um, but I don't think I've actually painted bases of infantry like this. As a matter of fact, this might be some of the first times I've done a lot of Napoleonic uh, infantry at this scale. So it's an interesting challenge. It's a departure from what I normally do. All of the paints for this one will be listed in the description below, same as always. So let's get started. So first of all, there's no getting around it. Six millimeters is very small. Now, a bunch of folks always say to me when I paint these things, oh, you must have good eyesight. And the fact is, once you've actually got them in front of you, it's genuinely not that difficult to see the detail on them. The way that six millimeter figures tend to be sculpted exaggerates a lot of these features. So what we're going to be doing is painting them similarly to how a computer game would render something in the distance. If you've ever played one of the old Total Wars, like Napoleon or Empire, and calling them old actually hurts me, uh, you'll remember how very distant soldiers would look, where it's just colors and shapes, rather than the detail that we would see on, say, a 28mm figure. So that's what we're aiming for. We want to try and replicate that style, so that once these are on the table, we can see them clearly, what they're supposed to be. Now I've seen quite a few 6mm figures that come on strips like this, um, and I kind of like it. It's a lot simpler than dealing with lots of little individual ones, um, though I know things like cavalry and such tend to come as individuals. It's really a matter of what you're painting. Now these guys aren't metal, these are actually 3D prints. Uh, they are from the Henry Turner range, and I'll make sure there's a link to those in the description. Um, I really like the prints because they are just a little bit sharper and, dare I say, more detailed than you would get from metal, but the painting is going to be the same for them one way or the other. Now, once you've got them assembled, you've got them popped on, say, a cork like I have here, or a popsicle stick or something to make them easier to hold, first thing to do is to prime them. Finally, right? <laughs> and I've primed these guys with premium grey from Vallejo, from their rattle can. Uh, now you could also use something like Gracier or Uniform Grey from the Army Painter. Something a middling grey is going to be your better choice here. Um, you could start from black, but if you do decide to go that route, I'd recommend give them a quick uh, brush over with some medium or lighter grey once you're done with that. Now the first thing that we're going to do to actually paint these guys is to overbrush them quite generously with white. Now I'm using matte white here from the Army Painter, although white is white for this purpose, it's not going to matter too much. But what I'm going to do is go over them a few times, and I really want most of the miniature to be white, particularly concentrating on the front of them. Uh, bits that are going to be white, this is going to do most of the painting for us, and bits that aren't, it's going to give us a little bit of shading and make some of the brighter colors go on slightly easier when we come to painting those. So this doesn't take long at all, and you can be pretty generous with it, don't worry about it being messy. On it goes, a bit of white. Now the rest of the steps are not all that different from painting regular infantry. We're going to start first of all with their skin. Now what I have here is a bit of an odd one, this is Rosy Flesh from Vallejo. Although Salmon Rose uh, is from their main range, Rosy Flesh, this is one of the uh, game color ranges. Uh, now some folks will go face, 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 hand, 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 hand. I tend to find it easier to stick to one guy at a time and just finish all of his bits. Now we'll move on to the iconic red jackets. For this, I'm going to use flat red. Now this goes on quite bright, uh, but it will dry a little and darken down as it does. The wonderful thing about this is for the most part, all you're going to see on these guys is going to be their sleeves, which are relatively easy to reach. If you've got parts on the front here where the uh, cross belts don't completely cover, goodness me, keeping these guys on screen, this is the tricky part because they're so bleeding small. But just a little dot of red in towards the chest will help sell the shape of that. Uh, but don't worry, you know, you can just leave the chest completely white. Uh, that does work fairly well. 
Otherwise, I'm going to go around now and shoulders and sleeves paint in all of the red. Now quickly while I am working on the sleeves, I regularly find it easier to turn them upside down while approaching the right arms. And with the jackets very quickly done, we can start painting in the cuffs. Now I don't say facings, I mean cuffs, because the uh, collars themselves are going to be all but indistinguishable at this size. The only place where I'm going to put anything uh, specific to the regimental color on them is going to be just these cuffs. Now on these guys I'm using buff, uh, but of course you can use your green or your blue or what have you to denote whichever regiment you are painting. Now I'm going to base coat the trousers, and here I've got Basilicanum Grey, which is one of the contrast colours from Citadel. You can just paint straight over the top of their shoes as well, it will not matter one jot. There's nothing saying here that this has to be contrast. Uh, really, I just like the colour, and the, the flow of it is nice and easy to work with. But you could use anything similar to get a nice light grey. And while they're drying, so we can paint in their muskets. And for this, I'm using snakebite leather. Um, again, if you want to swap to a, say, beige brown or something similar, you know, we are painting teeny tiny guys. I don't think they're going to complain. Uh, but I like snakebite leather for most wood effects at this sort of scale. Just leave the uh, sling on the muskets in white. Now what I'm going to use is Azure to spin them around and paint in that distinctive little water bottle. Now this is much lighter than the actual cornflower blue that it should have been, but once we shade it, it's going to look the business. There's also a wonderful physical element we're dealing with here called scale fade. And there's a, there's a fascinating little thing which happens. Where the smaller something is, the less light that we're able to see interacting with it. So what this means is the smaller our miniatures get, the darker colors will look on them. So when you're painting itty bitty little dudes, what you need to do is actually use that lighter color. Otherwise, it'll look dark and kludgy at a distance, which I thought was about the most interesting thing I'd ever learned. <laughs> now, still concentrating on their equipment, I'm going to use light sea gray to paint in their great coats rolled up across their backs. Now this one's nice and simple, all you need to do is dot in the center and then the sides. Now real quick, on the subject of their equipment, some of these guys you will see have the little knapsack hanging down on the left hand side of their bodies. If you want to, you can touch that in with a little bit of pale sand or even, I don't know, a light yellow sort of thing. But I will tell you this from experience, you're never going to see it. Um, I made the mistake of painstakingly painting those in on a strip of infantry. It's just not worth it. So we are going to skip those entirely. You will never see them. But if you do want to go ahead and put in the extra work because you're more satisfied knowing it's done, pale sand is my suggestion for those, those knapsacks. By contrast, no pun intended, something that will definitely stand out is their charcos and black equipment. So I'm using here Black Templar, which is the contrast color. And the reason for this is that it dries nice and dark, uh, but it will leave us with a little bit of shading and highlighting on things like the charcos and the cartridge cases and what have you. There's nothing saying, like I said, you can swap to a traditional acrylic. Uh, quite happily use a true black here. It's really a matter of personal taste on this one. So I'm going to contrast in all of the black. Now when that dries as if by magic, oh look, there they are. <laughs> what I'm going to do now is apply the metal bits. I've got iron hand steel for this. And just a little bit on their bayonets and then down the center of their muskets. Now I've actually seen some examples where people don't paint the musket at all. They just paint the little silver bayonet. Um, now that actually works quite well. It does, it does look really rather useful on the table. Uh, because these guys are a little bit more detailed, being prints rather than metal miniatures, I'd suggest paint the guys who are going to be in your front rank, and then the second and any subsequent ranks just paint the bayonets, because you get, the number of them is going to obscure the men standing behind. 
We'll move on now to one of the final details before we shade them. I have Retributor Armor. Let's flip these dudes upside down so it's a little easier to reach. And paint in their little brass plates. Uh, now some guys who have their arms away from their chests, technically there is a brass plate on their cross belts as well. Um, as I'm fond of saying, at this scale, don't worry about it. And with that done, there's honestly nothing saying you couldn't just varnish them and put them on the table like that. I mean, for the purposes of being visible at a distance, everything's there. But I want to take it a little further because I am kind of a fuss pot. So let's fuss. What I've got here is marine juice, and I've done a whole video on this. What it is for brevity's sake, this is Reichland Flesh Shade, Dark Tone from the Army Painter, and Lamian Medium in roughly equal amounts, just a little bit more Lamian Medium. Uh, I've also seen people use Nut Brown from Winsor Newton for this, uh, Burnt Umber and similar, uh, anything which is going to give us a little bit of shading, but won't really stain the high points on these miniatures. I want the colors to stay much as they are, uh, but get that shading effect. So a nice thinned down shade. You could even use Agrax Earthshade or similar, but do thin it down. Use the medium. Make sure you're not going to completely drench these guys. So once I've got this worked into everything, and it is important you do guide it into the recesses of some of these little, little details, uh, yeah, leave it to dry for about 20 minutes, half an hour, and we will see what we've got. Now, once again, if you're done, you're done. I quite like how that turns out, but it does make a couple of bits a bit darker than I'd like. So I'm just going to blast quickly with a little bit of buff on the cuffs again, very quickly, to the point that's now done. <laughs> I also very quickly did the same thing with the light sea grey on their rolled greatcoats again. And yeah, save this for your front rank. Uh, what I'm going to do now is grab some vermilion. And I am going to dab in just a little bit of this just on the edges of the coats to brighten those up a little bit. Um, I'm not even all that worried about the shape. You know, I'm not highlighting to create a particular outline here. I'm just blobbing up bits that are likely to be a little bit brighter. And it looks nicer. Now I have Vallejo's basic skin tone. And just like the slightly peachy color that we used before, uh, this is a slightly more... Yeah, peachy is the word. You know, this isn't your typical uh, almost pale beige skin color. Uh, it works super well at this scale. So you'll see I'm just popping a little bit of this against the back of knuckles just to emphasize the shape of the hand. And then what I'm going to do is boop their snoots and a little on those cheeks. And then finally, we're going to go back where it all started and get some white. I'm now just going to do a few tiny little dots of this on areas like the cross belts and up on the plumes here. Just little spots where I really want those to look tidier. As well, if you're painting the rear rank, it's a good idea to flip them around and then tidy up some of the belts, like this one where I made that gross mistake at the start. And once I'm finished with these, what I'm going to do is to hit them with a matte varnish. It's always a good idea to protect your work, especially at this scale. Now for things like the offices and such, um, the painting method is honestly not all that different. You're just picking couple of different colors to make their uniforms stand out a bit. Uh, the drummer too, I found pretty simple, just using the same colors that I had for the uniforms. And yeah, let's go ahead. Once I'm done here, let's finish these off and get a look at a unit. And there at last, our little unit of six millimeter British infantry is complete. And uh, I gotta admit that <laughs> shading and highlighting 6mm figures is probably the work of a sick mind, but I like how they've turned out. Uh, I do believe there are a couple of points along this painting progress process rather that you could have stopped, uh, particularly even before the shading. Um, I don't think it's all that necessary, but for your front ranks in particular, that little bit of extra time is really going to make a difference. 
Now the flags that you'll see going around, um, I'm not going to show you how I did them because that was an interminable faff. Uh, they are printed, um, I don't have a particularly good printer, but I'll pop a link to War Flags where I got those from, they were free, uh, but you can pick up of course uh, professionally printed, which I think if I was going to do an army I would definitely get somebody else to do the cool stuff for me. Because uh, they do add a lot, I just, man alive. What a challenge it was to get those tiny flags in the right bleeding place. Anyhow. So thank you again goes to Henry Turner for letting me have a play with these guys. Um, I really enjoyed painting them. I think you're going to see a bit more 6mm stuff on the channel because, cool, playing with the the visibility and the style of how I normally paint has been a real challenge and something I thoroughly enjoyed. So look out for more of that. As well, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, and as well, all of my wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my gorgeous producers who are showing up on screen now. You folks are the ones who make sure that I can get enough resin to be printing these tiny dudes. <laughs> if you've got any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all. And you all enjoy the rest of your day.